Hey guys, welcome to Adu Mandla. So in today's video, we will be discussing about the difference between United Nations General Assembly and United Nations Security Council. Without wasting much time, let's get started. So why we are discussing it? The basic reason is uh, you, you might have heard that Russia has invaded Ukraine, and in that context, emergency meetings are being held uh, of uh, United Nations Security Council, in which the U.S. had brought a resolution against Russia. Uh, for its actions that it it has taken against Ukraine, so uh, the matter was brought uh, to vote, and India uh, India has chosen to um, uh, abstain from voting. So India has uh, cho uh, cho uh, chosen a neutral uh, position on the matter. So also further, India has restrained from voting in a procedural vote, which called for the emergency meeting of United Nations General Assembly, that is the larger body. Uh, and in that context, uh, you might be asking that why India is abstaining. So that is basically because of uh, India's interests, India's concerns, uh, and uh, India's uh, traditional ties with Russia, and India's concerns pertaining to China and Indo-Pacific. So uh, now let's uh, move on to next slide to talk about United Nations basic structure. So UN is uh, is a kind of umbrella organization with six principal organs working under it. So these are the General Assembly, the Security Council, the Economic and Social Council, the Trusteeship Council, the International Court of Justice, the Secretariat. So these are the six principal organs through which with, uh, UN uh, conducts its operations uh, that are uh, uh, that are mandated uh, uh, that, uh, that that uh, that that it is mandated to do uh, under the UN Charter. <coughs> So now uh, comes the question of United Nations General Assembly. What is a UN General Assembly? So it is basically one of the principal organizations of the UN, and it is a kind of deliberative body consisting of all members of the United Nations. So all members who are part of this organization, that is UN, uh, they they constitute the the uh, larger body, that is UN General Assembly. So. Basic function of UN General Assembly is to deliberate. That is to discuss important matters that are of international concern or global concern, and to pass resolutions on them, expressing its opinion uh, on those matters. So each member country has one vote in the General Assembly. So if, uh, for example, India is also member of UN, so India has uh, uh, one vote, and uh, similarly all other countries each have one one vote. Uh, in this, <coughs> uh, in in United Nations General Assembly. Now uh, the question is that uh, resolutions that are passed by the General Assembly are not binding on the member nations and carry little legal significance. Uh, it means that what uh, the the resolutions that the United Nations General Assembly pass, they are not binding. Countries are not uh, uh, are are not bound to follow those uh, resolutions. And uh, thus, they have very uh, little uh, uh, legal significance. But though, in terms of uh, 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 in terms of collective steps, they do have an importance. So we will look into the collective st uh, steps in late, uh, further slides. Uh, <clears throat> just a minute. Now comes the United Nations Security Council. We have discussed about uh, UN General Assembly. Now is a United Nations Security Council, which is also one of the six principal organs of the United Nations. So uh, it has basically 15 members, uh, and five members of uh, these 15 are permanent, and 10 are non-permanent. So five permanent members of the Security Council are USA, Russia, United Kingdom, France, China. So these are the five permanent members. Uh, they they uh, they always remain, uh, but they always hold the chair in the United Nations Security Council. Uh, I'm not saying the chairmanship. I'm saying the chair there. So they 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 remain part of it. And ten non-permanent members that the U UNSC has, uh, they are elected on uh, uh, on for a two uh, for a two-year term uh, through through a vote in General Assembly. So basically, any country who is member of uh, uh, United Nation can become a non-permanent member for a, a period of two years by uh, seeking its uh, by seeking uh, membership. And its membership is then decided by uh, a kind of election in the General Assembly by vote. So if it it uh, 
if a particular member country secures that necessary uh, majority uh, and wins the election uh, then it becomes the non permanent member of UNSC for two years term currently India is also uh, one of the non permanent members that that's why uh, UN, uh, uh, India uh, uh, it, it, uh, in previous slides as I have told you that India has abstained from voting because if uh, if India had not been the member no a non permanent member then there would not have been any question of uh, India's abstention or voting extra so <coughs> uh, so functions of United Nations Security Council, uh, the chief function and perhaps the most important function that the UNSC has is to maintain international peace and security. So after the World War II, uh, when uh, it was seen that uh, uh, to maintain order uh, in in uh, in the world, it is necessary to have some body that can uh, that can act as a potential deterrent. Again, uh, uh, against the, any uh, destabilization of peace and security, UNSC was formed. So its chief function is international peace and security. So this thing it ensures by passing resolutions that are binding on all member states of the UN General Assembly. So uh, as I've told you in case of UN General Assembly, the resolutions passed by that body are not binding, but binding, but in case of UNSC, the resolutions passed by uh, UNSC are binding and uh, these res resolutions may pertain to uh, imposing sanctions or say uh, sending troops, peacekeeping troops to, uh, to a war-torn country uh, to, to prevent violence there extra extra. So uh, resolutions are passed to maintain international peace and security and those resolutions are binding. So uh, in in uh, in order to have the resolution passed uh, on any substantial matter, it is necessary that nine affirmative votes are cast casted in favor of that resolution. Uh, with the with each five each of the five permanent members approving uh, that resolution. So the thing is that when a resolution has to be passed, uh, then out of fifteen countries nine must support that resolution and and out of those nine countries five are uh, per five five permanent members must, must also agree with with th that resolution that is they uh, if you, even if one member is against that uh, uh, resolution that is uh, being passed and it if in case it exercises its veto then the resolution will not get passed and uh, uh, and the, and then that uh, uh, legal legal binding uh, thing gets uh, kind of uh, uh, takes a back back seat because unless the resolutions are passed uh, there is no uh, legal action that can be taken so each of these five permanent members uh, uh, in a way hold veto power on any substantial matter that is being brought uh, that is that is brought before the UNSC so uh, uh, also recently as I have told you that uh, 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 the resolution was brought against Russia by the US uh, for, for the aggression of Russia against Ukraine and uh, in fact Russia is currently holding the chair uh, uh, chair uh, it is a chairperson of uh, UNSC and it has exercised its veto so that has led to uh, the known passing of the of the uh, re resolution that criticized Russia. So it has uh, uh, imposed that veto because it is a permanent member. And as I've told you, even if one member permanent member cast uh, cast its negative vote, then the resolution uh, cannot uh, could not get passed. So uh, the thing is now. Uh, you, a question might come in your mind that now what is the significance of United Nations General Assembly after UNSC failure because uh, uh, they, uh, as I have told you that uh, in previous slides that now uh, the, uh, the effort is being made to call uh, a emergency meeting of United Nations General Assembly and procedural vote is being carried uh, is being casted in, in, in United Nations Security Council and India has abstained from voting in, uh, in that procedural uh, vote also. So while 
uh, the UN the UNSC's resolutions are binding, and uh, the, it, that means that uh, if they are violated, these uh, legally binding resolutions are violated, then uh, uh, it is said that principles of UN Charter uh, uh, have have been violated, or uh, those those actions uh, that uh, th uh, that are taken uh, against the resolutions that uh, that uh, that are termed illegal. So uh, if when when a when a country uh, ignores those resolutions, uh, multiple things can follow uh, that may include arms uh, embargo or security steps that that can be taken against the country. So, for example, if uh, say for example, uh, Pakistan is uh, asked to. Uh, reduce any terrorist activity or suppose uh, it it attacks india and uh, unsc holds a meeting and uh, in uh, in unanimity unsc uh, says uh, uh, to pakistan that please uh, pull out your troops out of india then in that context if pakistan ignores that then it would be a uh, called illegal action of uh, pakistan and uh, multiple uh, security steps uh, can be taken by the unsc against the pakistan so this is just a an example this is how uh, the unsc functions the un uh, uh, un general assembly resolutions work differently so uh, how they work differently because they are not legally binding but they do reflect uh, uh, the world's collective view so we are basically uh, un is a is a, a, a world organization uh, which is uh, which is composed of member states so uh, we are a, in uh, in case of world we are a, a kind kind of community so when a particular matter comes into question then there is a collective view of the community so united Na nation general assembly resolutions carry that effect that is what the world in general sees or uh, or uh, uh, observes about a particular matter uh, and then uh, in that context when uh, un uh, uh, resolutions are passed in general assembly then steps that could be taken against such activities are collective economic and trade sanctions for example uh, now the russia has uh, invaded ukraine and sanctions are being Im imposed on russia so uh, those sanctions uh, they are uh, imposed uh, uh, individually uh, by the countries as well as uh, uh, as part of uh, uh, as part of uh, those sanctions that are that uh, that are considered by the united nations general assembly so a country uh, russia will uh, will be facing now uh, the individual country sanctions also and also uh, uh, un collective uh, economic and trade sanctions so this is basically the difference between the UNSC and United Nations General Assembly resolutions. So previously similar situations have arised. Uh, for example, in case of Myanmar, when when resolutions uh, re resolution was passed and sanctions were imposed on the uh, on the Myanmar military the, uh, that is uh, called the Janta and the name of the uh, Myanmar ar army is uh, Janta. So India has uh, uh, in this in this context in, in context of uh, Ukraine Russia conflict, India has in, uh, uh, choose to remain neutral. Uh, in in case of both United Na Nations Security Council and United Nations General Assembly, so uh, that neutral position is basically due to the national and geopolitical concerns that India has in Indo-Pacific and in China. So you uh, must be knowing that China is uh, increasingly asserting its uh, uh, newly acquired power or in asserting its uh, it is flexing its muscles. And we are facing, in fact, as it is a neighbor of India, and uh, we are directly facing those, uh, facing those, this muscle flexing, uh, and uh, uh, in that context, the uh, the support of Russia is crucial. And uh, Russia has also traditionally supported India. Also, India has significant military uh, trade with Russia. So that's why India has chosen to remain neutral uh, uh, to ensure that its own interests are not jeopardized. In this political conflict that 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 is uh, that is unfolding uh, as of now in in Ukraine, so it is yet to be seen what resolutions are finally adopted in UN General Assembly because uh, procedural vote was cast, but uh, the, uh, those resolutions have to be passed by UN General Assembly, and that thing is yet to happen. 
so uh, what sanctions russia uh, will face as uh, uh, as part of uh, uh, as part of un uh, general assembly that will be different from the sanctions that the individual countries are imposing like usa britain or france etc so this is all about today's lecture and uh, uh, if you like this lecture do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel and also you can join our telegram channel the link of which is shown in, on your screen and this will be provided in the description box also so thank you guys have a very nice day ahead